Good morning. Well, it is the day after my Mercedes-Benz road trip with the roof down. And yesterday when I got home from my little adventure, I popped the telly on and the endless summer was on. The original surf movie from the 1960s, all about surfing and trying to go around the world and capture the endless summer. And after the endless summer had finished, I went to my bookshelf and I picked out Ron Stoner's fantastic book. He was a photographer and he documented the early days of surfing in California when everybody had big longboards. And it's an interesting story in and of itself because he disappeared. Nobody knows where he went. We don't know if he died, if he ran away. The world changed and he just decided that it wasn't for him and that was it. He was gone. But anyway, after my evening of looking at original 1960s surfing culture, I got onto I really want a surfer's car. What is the ultimate surfer's car? And I looked through the pictures on all these books and I thought, well, they're all using Volkswagen buses, split screen camper vans, the ultimate surfer's vehicle. And I'd heard that Volkswagen have just come out with a new one. It's called the ID Buzz. It's electric for a new generation of surfers. So I'm gonna go and trade my Mercedes-Benz SLK in against a Volkswagen ID Buzz. The ultimate surfer's van, the hippie van, the freedom van. I'm gonna go get one right now. So, climate, I find it quite stressful having, I'm on private ground right now by the way, I'm in the grounds of Stanbrook Abbey, I was going to stop here and do my filming in the place that I normally film, but there's a lawnmower, you can probably hear it, so no audio, um, cool my feet, cool my feet, you mother, <laughs> got Alan Partridge joking on a Volkswagen review. Right, I would normally film at all of my other secret spots for filming, but uh, every spot that I went to, there's somebody mowing the lawn. So we're down to the river where I make most of my videos. I'm gonna walk you around the van and um, you can see what you think of it. I have to admit, I do think it's quite a good looking thing. Uh, if we look for some hints of the original Volkswagen, we've got the sort of air vents at the back, which again are hinting at the original split screen. The whole sort of shape and profile of it is a little nod to the original split screen van. And then you've got this midway point, which you can't see so much on the single color vans, but you can see you've got that swage line that comes all the way right down to the front and then down towards the front bumper, similar to the style of the old split screen. You've got the big nose badge, again, something that the original split screen had, and then obviously all the lights are hugely complex and LED, and I can't tell you anything about them because I don't know. But I have to conclude that it is quite a good looking thing like as a family car, and if you think about all these other equivalent EVs at an equivalent price point, this is much better looking than all of them. I mean, would you rather have one of these or a BMW iX? I think they're pretty much in the ballpark on money at the sort of 60,000 pound point. I'd much rather rock around in one of these Volkswagens. The wheels are absolutely gigantic and you are 100% going to curb them. Look at the way the alloy hangs out the side of the tire. So they're 265 40 21 on the back and 235, so a little bit skinnier on the front. But even so, that is some gigantic tires and I will put just here the cost of replacing the fronts and then the backs. Inside, it's a very cool looking thing. I have to say, I have been very impressed with the overall look of it. That is very smart, very light and airy. 
and it's luxurious but without being overdone you've got adjustable very comfortable seats i still find it absolutely crazy that electric cars have electric seats why when you're trying to maximize range would you have unnecessary electrical things on the car? There's no need, there's nothing wrong with manual seats. You'd save yourself weight and you save yourself drain on the battery. That being said, I love the finish inside. Look at this, it's so neatly done. It's kind of minimalist while still being modern. I think they've done a great job of designing that dashboard. And the everything about the colors you know the, the colorways on this one is really nice i like the look of the door cards everything feels really nice and expensive as it should because it's a sixty thousand pound vehicle chargers in your doors no need for that is there i like a that it's a twin slider and b that it's just a manual door I wouldn't be surprised if they'd gone and put some electrically sliding door on it, which would make no sense. But the rear seats fold completely flat, as you can see. But surprisingly, it is only a five-seater. Why would they not have put two small seats in the back of it? There is going to be a third row of seats available, and all of the seating is made out of recycled materials. There is no leather option. You can't have a nice tan leather interior then, which I would quite like. It's a twin slider, as I said. Uh, and you can walk through the front as well. There's no transmission tunnel, so you can walk straight through the front. Or if you're really warm, you could lie down in the front there and then you could get your dad to press the call my feet you mother button. Call my feet you mother. And then you'd be really nicely cool down there. Um, that obviously, as you can probably tell by the amount of times I've mentioned it in my video, is my favorite feature on the VW ID Buzz. Call my feet you mother. Going round the back, we have some extremely complex lights that are definitely going to go wrong and be very expensive to replace when they do go wrong. And it's just nicely designed. It's actually, for an electric vehicle, really well put together. I like what they've done with the design of this. I'd just much prefer it if it had a two litre diesel engine, but let's not talk about that. If we pop the boot, there's a button under there to pop the boot and then it's electrically operated. And I'm not gonna say it again because I've already said that an electrically operated boot on an electric vehicle is stupid. In the back, as you can see, I have got my surfboard in there. This surfboard is, uh, it's only a small one actually. Seven foot six by 20 and a half, that one. That's a, a Cortez from Alda Surfboards based down in um, Cornwall. So we have trays in the back for eating your sandwiches whilst your dad is driving you off for a surf or one of your mates and then in the rear got all these cubby holes which is strange because those are set up to have people in the back but it's only a five seater underneath you've got this platform in there is uh, some charging stuff to do with the electricity and i've got a charging cable under there as well but it looks to me like all of this lifts out so you can have a completely flat floor van and i'm going to make a wild presumption that the rear row of seats comes out as well making it pretty large you could absolutely sleep in that it's definitely big enough to do so i'm going to put the rear seats up i tell you one little thing that i do like about this van and i don't know if this is the same on all modern vehicles but the seats actually click down you get an old volvo they don't but there's actually a click where that will now stay completely flat again a very simple little thing but I like it. With the seats back, you can see plenty of leg room in the rear. Split fold seat, so we've still got the surfboard going through. And again, all just very nicely put together. Okay, last thing on my electric tailgate gripe, look at the size of the shockers or the hydraulic rams that are needed to make this tailgate go down. There's a button at the back here. I don't get it. What is the point in an electric tailgate? Honestly, I've never understood it. There's nothing wrong with lifting your arm up and pulling your tailgate down. I like the spoiler though. It's got a cool sort of look going on. I wonder if you can drive it around with the doors open. I bet you can. Should we have a go? So up front then, let me talk you through some of the controls. Uh, well, I'll try. I don't know anything about them. Let's have a go. Right, we're inside. We have 79% charge and 178 miles range. We have the river directly in front of us and we have a massive screen. To switch the car on, you put your foot on the brake. Well, it's already on effectively. Once you put your foot on the brake, it comes to life. Now, what I find quite bizarre is this is your shifter over here. So if I roll this forward, it will go into drive. And if I roll it forwards again, it will go into B, 
which is regenerative braking, which is a very strange mode where you drive around and the electric power from the brakes, when you brake, regenerates the battery. It does feel like you're sort of pulling a very heavy trailer when you do that though. I find it quite bizarre. Roll it back and you're going to reverse. And then we have an electronic handbrake. Reverse brings up a camera on the rear uh, so you can reverse and not hit things. Um, and then there's a button over here for your handbrake. So if I click that, handbrake on. Over here on my screen, I've got all manner of lights and isoteric dials that I will never understand. Um, but we've got climb it. I'm just gonna show you my favorite button. Look, cool my feet, you mother. Warm my hands, warm my feet, defog my windows, fresh air, rapid heating, rapid cooling. So you've got plenty of options there. Heated seats, both sides. Um, and then elsewhere on the menu, we've got monitor vehicle area and be prepared to brake. It knows I'm about to roll into the river, doesn't it? Um, don't really know what all of this does. Mode. I'll save you the misery of watching Jeff try to work out an extremely complex touchscreen system and we'll run through this really quickly. It's like the slow spread of a fart from the driver's seat all the way back. I've no idea what that's doing. Um, classic climate, that sounds a bit more me, doesn't it? There we go, that's something that almost makes sense. Oh look, we have got a slidey dial. Except it's, it's a digital slidey dial. Oh, I just need a big knob. So, that is the extremely complex, um, and to be honest, that's not even as complex as some of the vehicles that are out there at the moment. You've got cup holders down here, and they're big! Big cup holders in a big, strong cubby hole thing that isn't gonna break. That feels really good. Um, elegant blowers down there, elegant blowers up there, and one over there as well. I tell you what, it's just a really nice looking thing in here. Yeah, I do approve of the inside. Well, there's a bonnet hatch there. Should we flick the bonnet hatch? I mean, what is there to see under there? Let's go find out. So I flicked the bonnet hatch and it folds forwards like a truck and in there we have um the mechanism to close the bonnet and your washer fluid i'm not quite sure what all the rest of that is because it's all to do with the engines and the motors because there's no radiator is there the batteries will be underneath the back so there we go you tell me basically no idea i do like it though i like it a lot we should probably take it back now though. So what we have then is a very nicely designed, beautifully styled, retro cool vehicle that is perfect for the modern surfer. But there lies the problem. Despite the fact that I love the idea of running one of these as a family car, there is a small elephant in the room, which is the price. These are basically, 60,000 pound vehicles once you've added two-tone paint which you have to have you have to have the two-tone paint you can't have a vw microbus and not have the top half a different color to the bottom half you've got to have yellow and white that was how i specced mine when i was shopping online for one of these that's a three thousand pound option so 64 grand basically once you've added a few toys on your vw id buzz and then if you go to the dealer and say, here's the one I've printed out that I did online. I've always wanted one of these since I was a kid. Can I have one? They'll say yes, in probably two years, maybe more. It's a one year to 18 month wait to get one in a solid color. It's a two year plus wait to get one in two tone. So have I found the ultimate surface vehicle? No. This vehicle is not aimed at surfers, it's not aimed at family people. So if it's not surfers buying the VW ID Buzz, then who is? Well, I guess it's an alternative to the Range Rover. People that like to show off that they've got the latest thing, that they've got lots of money. Because at 60 grand, I don't think anyone that I know is gonna be buying one. 60,000 pounds and only 200 miles range. So. Your holiday to the beach in your VW ID Buzz is going to involve a lot of time sat at service stations waiting for it to charge. So I went to Volkswagen today to see if I could find the successor to the original split screen van that was loved so much by the hippies and the surfers and the freedom fighters back in the day. So why did they love that van? Well, the simple answer is they were cheap and they were plentiful 
and they were big and they were simple to maintain. So if we're going shopping today for something that is cheap, plentiful and simple to maintain, I'm probably going to suggest a Citroen Zara Picasso. That's right ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. The spiritual successor to the split screen van is a Citroen Zara Picasso, probably for about 500 quid with really bad paint but a long MOT because you could take the seats out and you've got your very own surf wagon. If the hippie and the surfer movement happened today, they would be driving Zara Picassos and old Ford Galaxies. So am I gonna go and buy a 68,000 pound VW ID Buzz? No. I would have a 500 quid Citroen Zara Picasso and I'd keep my SLK as well. And I'd still be quitting. I get it, I really get it. I like this thing. I can see why someone would buy them. People will buy these for the same reason that people bought the very first smart car or the very first Mini that came out. Do you remember? There were waiting lists for those cars. And funnily enough, the SLK that I'm driving as well, waiting list to get your hands on them. It's a statement car. It's a show off piece. It's an Instagram thing to impress your friends and your neighbors. You're only gonna keep it three years and then you're gonna chop it in for whatever the next fad is. Weight wise, it's rated at 3,000 kilos. 2,400 kilos is its empty weight, so 2.4 tons. So it's got a load rating of 600 kilos. So you can take 600 kilos worth of stuff. So if you've got four fat friends, you're gonna be in trouble. Volkswagen have also confirmed that there's going to be a motorhome version. Not quite sure why you'd want a motorhome with only 250 miles range, notwithstanding the fact that I've already said and laid down the gauntlet to Volkswagen, lend me one of these so I can see if it does 250 miles. I'd actually really love Volkswagen to lend me one of these to actually take on a surfing trip with my family. Because that really would be a true test of the vehicle, wouldn't it? Can it go down to Nuki for a weekend with all the surfboards and all the gear, and surfboards on the roof as well, creating drag, can actually use it as a car. Come on. Yeah, it's not like, so there's 60 eventually. I keep wanting to say it drives really nicely, but then it should. It's the size of a Volkswagen T6 transporter with the turning circle of a Golf and enough electric power to get it moving. It would be a miracle if it didn't drive nicely. So 2.4 tons of bulk that you've got to move around the country and park in multi-story car parks next to everybody else's 2.4 ton vehicle. Crumbling at the seams doesn't even come close. 2.4 tons. What was that? Okay, so it gave me a warning then to remind me to brake because that person was turning right. It wasn't the person turning right that was the problem, it was the heart attack that I knew he had when my entire dashboard lit up in red. Jesus Christ. All of this technology that's on these vehicles, right, I, I, I honestly don't think it helps. Yes, you might avert the odd crash, but the stress that it puts on people and the um, technological strain that it adds to an already technologically heavy package is insane. I, I do really like it, I, I, I'm very, very fond of it, but in order for me to be very fond of it, I have to remove everything that I know about electric cars and the price tag. So if you could delete my memory of what I learned on the Joe Rogan podcast with the gentleman that wrote Cobalt Red. Throughout the whole history of slavery, I mean, I'm going back centuries, never, never in human history has there been more suffering that generated more profit and was linked to the lives of more people around the world, ever, ever in history, than what's happening in the Congo right now. And if you could give me one for free and set up a charger at my house, I can't have one at my house at the moment, um, then yes, please, can I have one in yellow and white? Well, no, sir, you'll have to wait two years. What am I going to do for two years? What do all these people do that order cars and wait two years? Like, how much can happen in two years? I mean, look at the two years that we've just had. The entire world has fallen apart. By the time your Volkswagen has arrived, you'll probably be dead. Right, so pulling back into Volkswagen now, and it's showing 165 miles 
range. I think we started at 195, so it's done 30 miles range, and I, I don't think I've done 30 miles. Okay, that's it, I'm done. That concludes my time with the ID Buzz. What's my actual conclusion? I absolutely love it. I'd have one instead of a Range Rover. <laughs> I'd never buy a Range Rover. <laughs> so, uh, brilliant conclusion there, Jeff. Nice one. Yeah, better than the Range Rover that you don't want. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go see how much it is to buy one and how much the path exchange price actually is. And then we'll get out of here before they realize that I am Jeff buys cars. If I want to buy one, it's 15 grand down, 550 pound a month over three years with an optional final payment of 39,000 pounds. So I'd end up paying back 73,000 pounds, even though the van itself is 63,000 pounds. So you pay 10 grand extra. Now I suspect, bearing in mind I wouldn't get it for two years if I ordered it today, uh, and you probably shouldn't forget the 500 quid that they'd probably give me part exchange for my SLK. Um, now I suspect that we're gonna start seeing these cars for sale for a premium. The first people who are gonna get them and get them delivered, because there's a waiting list, and because they're not arriving for two years, you're gonna see VW ID buzzes for sale. If, if they're not already for sale, for way over and above what they actually are. Now interestingly, when I said, what kind of cars are people getting out of to get into the ID buzz, I was thinking they're Range Rover drivers, but actually uh, they're not. It's third or fourth cars. So people are buying them like toys, which is interesting. So we're gonna save the planet by having very expensive toys. Right, that is the end of my VW ID Buzz review. I'm off to buy the true pure surface vehicle, a Citroen Zara Picasso, and if I'm lucky, maybe I can find a beige one. That's a lot of money for a van, isn't it? I mean, it's lovely. Don't get me wrong, I really, really liked the ID Buzz. I, I liked it even more. I knew I was gonna like it, but I liked it even more than I thought I was going to like it. But, children mining cobalt in the Congo, and the price tag, and the range, and the fact that it's got so much technology on it, and the questions about how long the battery's gonna last, although it does come with an eight year warranty, eight year guarantee. The thing is though, you can get excited about the ID Buzz and any electric car based on what they are and how they feel, but there is no replacement for this. surf trips seriously you could charter a boat you could go anywhere you want I'll take a 500 pound Citroen Zara Picasso and 62 and a half thousand pounds worth of travel <laughs> I love this car Been experimenting as well, see how fast I can get around roundabouts. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. Jeff buys cars. Still, YouTube's most boring car channel.